everybody. Welcome to Grace at Your Place. It is so good to have you with us. Sadly, my wife can't be with us today, but I'm going to truck along by myself. Uh, Today, I'm going to be talking about never giving up. You know, these are testing times that we're going through and God is giving us the opportunity to come close to Him. And so after our worship time, uh, I'm gonna speak about those things and give you an encouragement of what God's doing in our hearts today. But let's pray. Father, thank You that we can be together. 
Thank you, Lord, that you're working throughout our nation and overseas. We pray that we would be blessed as we worship you now. In Jesus' name, amen.
Father, you are so good. And we thank you that we can come together today all around the world, all around Aotearoa, New Zealand, and worship you. Thank you for your presence. And we pray that you'll be with us today as we join together in hearing your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, kia ora e tofano. It is so good to see you today. Hope you're doing well wherever you are around the world and around New Zealand, uh, especially thinking of our friends in Auckland today who are still locked down and hope things are going okay. Hopefully my message today is an encouragement, especially for you if you are feeling discouraged. You may have heard a story about the famous English Prime Minister Winston Churchill going to speak to a school, a whole lot of young people. He stood up and he said these words, Never give up, never give up, never, never, never give up. And then he went and sat down. 
Now, unfortunately, that story is not quite a true one. Uh, There is a similar true story where Winston Churchill did go to a school, he did give a speech that had a very similar message, but it was a lot longer. But I actually like that urban myth because it really uh, is exactly what I talk about, what I want to talk about today. It's about not giving up. It's the biblical theme of perseverance. Now, I know people all over the planet are very frustrated at the moment. We don't know what's going on. We don't know what's going to happen with our lives. It's very difficult to plan things. I know that there are people who are anxious. There are people who are struggling with the situation and feeling like they're not coping. A lot of people saying, when will this end? You know, these frustrating times, these times of trial are the times when our faith has a chance to grow. These are the times where we either come close to God or we start leaning away from God. We can all start to go towards prayer and towards reading the Bible, or we can become tired and disappointed with God and we can turn to other things. You know, a lot of people are feeling at the moment like their faith isn't working. They're feeling like their prayers aren't working. And when that happens, sometimes we stop praying, we stop reading the Bible, we stop believing that God's going to act. But I wanna tell you, frustrations and trials are not a new thing in history. They've been happening all throughout biblical history, all throughout uh, mankind's history. This sort of thing has gone on. But the Bible has got a solution for it and it's called perseverance, not giving up. You know, the Bible tells us that God will purposely allow us to stay in frustrating circumstances to build our character, to build our perseverance. And so when we go through these times of trial, we need to recognise that this is not necessarily the devil, but this is God helping us to grow. Listen to these words from the brother of Jesus called James in his letter, his first letter, uh, verses two to four in the Living Bible. He says, Dear friends, is your life full of difficulties and temptations? Then be happy. For when the way is rough, your patience has a chance, chance to grow. So let it grow and don't try to squirm out of your problems. For when your patience is finally in full bloom, then you'll be ready for anything, strong in character, full and complete. You know, what seems like a frustration to you and me can actually be an opportunity for our faith to grow, an opportunity for our character and our perseverance to grow. You know, these circumstances are here as a test of our faith. They're there to see where we really are in our faith. Are we people who are weak that will just give up at the first sign of a challenge? Or will we grow? Will we press into God? Will we grow in our faith? You know, when times are hard, it really shows where we are at in our faith. Do we automatically lean into God? or do we automatically lean away from God? See, people who lean into God find themselves praying more, knowing that that's where the solution lies. They read their Bible more, they pray with others, and they believe that God some stage, sometime is gonna finally break through. But the people who lean away from God get tired of prayer, they get tired of spiritual disciplines, they start to give up and they go to other comforts things that make them feel happy other than God, like our TV, our computer, Netflix, social media, maybe even alcohol and drugs and things like that. These are the ways that we get comfort away from God. Now, I wanna point out, there's nothing wrong with TV or the computer or movies, but they can be an escape from reality. They can be a distraction from pressing into God. You know, God wants us to come to Him as soon as we have frustration and to hang in there with Him when things are going wrong. And one of the keys to this I found is to bring God into your day early. Now, personally, I have a battle every morning, an internal battle when I wake up about making God the first person that I go to. I have all these other temptations of things to look at. They're not bad temptations, but I'm tempted to read the news. I'm tempted to read emails. I'm tempted to check social media. But what God wants me to do is to tune in Him first, into Him first, to pray, to read His Word, to get His thoughts in my mind early. 
And I find that if I go to those other things, the news and social media and things, it distracts me from having time with God. And before I know where I am, it's time to get up, time to have a shower, time to get into the day. Tuning in to God first gives God the chance to have the first word in my heart. Maybe He's got some very powerful thoughts that are gonna carry me through the day. I remember many years ago when I was quite young, I woke up and I had a wonderful quiet time. And actually when I was in the shower, I was still praying and suddenly an elderly man who had been a wonderful fatherly figure in my childhood uh, came to my mind and I felt as though God spoke to me and said, why don't you go and visit that elderly man today? So I fortunately had a day off. I jumped in my car. I went out and visited this lovely man. And in the process, I discovered that uh, he really wasn't following Jesus in a number of areas. And I challenged him about his walk with God. I invited him to make a full commitment and challenged him about a few areas where he could uh, really come closer to God. I know that he took that seriously because he talked to uh, other friends of mine and he said that this had really impacted him. But about a, about a week later, this dear man dropped dead and I never got an opportunity to see him again. But as I look back, I see that that was God's uh, whispering into my heart, go and speak to this man and uh, I've got a message to give him, which will be my last message to give him before he passes away. You know, wouldn't it be terrible to have not been listening to God and to have missed that message to go and speak to that man? You know, prayer is such an important thing. Prayer is dialogue. It's not just when we speak to God, but when God speaks to us. So often we pray and we feel that it's weak and it doesn't achieve much. But I wanna tell you today, one of the most important ingredients in powerful prayer is this word perseverance, never giving up. You know, many times the Bible tells us, keep praying and don't give up. And the reason it tells us that is because so often we pray and it seems like nothing happens. Jesus says that the way to pray effectively is to be really persistent. Many times when Jesus was talking about prayer, He said, if you wanna have effective prayer, this is the key, be persistent, keep praying and don't give up. In Luke chapter 11, Jesus tells the story of a man who has a visitor come to his place about midnight and he invites this visitor in and he's got no food. So he thinks, oh my goodness, everything's shut. Where am I gonna go? And he thinks my neighbour will give me some food. So he goes across, bangs on the door of his neighbour. The neighbour says, I'm asleep. I don't wanna come to the door, go away. But uh, this man knocks and knocks and knocks and he just does not give up. He says, I've got visitors here. I need to have some bread, please come down. And he just keeps on banging until the neighbour finally comes down and gives him some bread. And Jesus says this uh, in Luke chapter 11, verses nine to 10, he says, this is Jesus speaking. And so I tell you, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you for everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and everyone who knocks, the door will be open. And Jesus is talking about the story uh, in relationship to persistent prayer. He says, that's the way you get your prayers answered. Don't just pray once, keep on praying until that answer comes through. And then a few chapters later in Luke, uh, Jesus tells another story. This time it's about uh, an old lady that wants justice. So she goes along to uh, a judge and uh, talks to him about getting justice. And we pick up the story in Luke chapter 18, verses one to eight. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about men. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care about men, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. 
And Jesus said, listen to what the unjust says. And will not God bring about justice for His chosen ones who cry out to Him day and night? Will He keep putting them off? I tell you, He will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will He find faith on the earth? So here Jesus is talking about another key ingredient to prayer. It's this widow that's banging on the door of the judge and banging and banging and saying, I will not give up until you give me a reply. And Jesus says, this is the way that you get your prayers answered. It's a little bit sad that bit where he says, when I come back, will I find faith on the earth? And what Jesus is really saying is, will people still be praying? Will they still be persisting in prayer or will they have got discouraged and given up? You see, persistence builds faith. When we keep on praying, what we're saying is, God, I believe in you. I trust you. I believe that you're gonna keep coming through. And so I'm gonna keep on praying. When you pray and don't receive an answer, but keep on going, you're saying, Lord, I know you've got this. I know that I can trust you. So I will not give up on you. A number of years, we had a very huge discouragement when we lost a baby. Uh, She was in the womb. She died at 40 weeks on her due date. And both my wife Liz and I were just so discouraged and even very discouraged in our faith as well. We come from a movement, the Vineyard Movement, that believes in healing, that believes that uh, God answers our prayer and so many people we've seen healed, although sadly we've prayed for many that haven't been healed. But uh, when our baby died, I was so discouraged about prayer that I remember waking up the next day after the baby had died and saying, Lord, how will I have the faith to pray for people to get well again when my own baby has died. But I felt that God spoke into my heart and said, David, don't give up, keep praying. He said to me, you know, when you pray for somebody else to get well, even though you've been discouraged, you're saying, even though I've had a disappointment, I still believe God heals. I still believe that He's good. I still believe that He's in the business of healing. In fact, I felt God say to me that to have had a big disappointment and still get back on the horse and keep praying is a higher level of faith than to pray when everything always goes right. And so I've tried to do that, that despite discouragements, and I get a lot of discouragements when I've prayed and things haven't come through, What I believe is when I keep on praying, when I keep on trusting, I'm saying, well, God, I don't understand about those discouragements, but I trust in your character. I trust that you're good. I trust that you're a miracle working God and I trust that my prayers work. So I'm gonna keep on going and I'm gonna leave the result in your hands. You know, there's a very interesting uh, background to prayer in a story of Daniel in the Old Testament. In Daniel chapter 10, we see this fascinating story about Daniel fasting and praying to get the result for a prayer. Daniel wanted to get some wisdom about what was gonna happen in the future. So he decided to fast and pray until God spoke to him. So he prayed and fasted day one and nothing happened. Day two, nothing happened. And then day three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. He actually prayed for 21 days with nothing happening. And then finally on that 21st day, an angel arrived. And let's have a listen to what happened when the angel arrived and spoke to Daniel. In Daniel chapter 10, verses 10 to 14, Daniel speaking about the angel, he says, a hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. He said, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed, consider carefully the words I'm about to speak to you and stand up for now I have been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. Then he continued, do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard and I've come in response to them. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future for the vision concerns a time yet to come. Now this gives us an amazing background to what goes on when we pray in the spiritual realm. What happened there is that Daniel started to pray 
The angel didn't come for 21 days, but the angel says to him, the moment that you started to pray, God sent me the angel out to answer your prayer, but I was detained by a demonic being called the Prince of Persia. I'm not gonna go into all the demonic beings and the principalities and powers, but the Bible alludes to the fact that there are spiritual battles that go on when we pray. And this demonic being called the Prince of Persia delayed this angel from coming. And there was a battle that went on for 21 days. And it was obviously the prayer of Daniel that kept that battle going. And finally, the angel was able to win and come and speak to Daniel. See, we never know what's going on when we pray. We don't understand why there are delays to prayer. But I'm so pleased that Daniel kept on praying, that he didn't give up after after day 10 or day 15 or day 20. Imagine if he had given up on day 20 when he was one day away from getting the result. But finally, through his prayers, uh, the angel was able to come and bring an answer. Friends, when you don't get an answer straight away to your prayers, you don't know what is happening behind the scenes. God may have sent your answer, but there may be a demonic delay that you need to pray through. I love the story of Elijah and the faith that he had when he prayed. There's a wonderful story where he talks to King Ahab and he says, God is gonna send rain. Let's see that story in 1 Kings 18, verses 41 to 46. Elijah said to King Ahab, go eat and drink for there is a sound of heavy rain. So King Ahab went off to eat and drink and listen to what Elijah did. He went to the top of Mount Carmel. He bent down on the ground, put his face between his knees And he started to pray basically, go and look towards the sea, he told his servant. And the servant went up and looked. There is nothing there, the servant said. Seven times Elijah said to the servant, go back. The seventh time the uh, servant reported, a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising up from the sea. So Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, hitch up your chariot and go down before the rain stops. Meanwhile, the sky grew black with clouds, the wind rose, a heavy rain came on and Ahab rode off to Jezreel and the power of the Lord came upon Elijah and tucking in his cloak into his belt, he ran ahead of Ahab all the way to Jezreel. Now we've got to have a little understanding behind that story. Uh, There had not been any rain for three and a half years because uh, Elijah had prayed and asked God to cut off all the rain and that's what had happened. So they were in a desperate drought situation. And Elijah said, I'm gonna pray to God and ask for rain. So he told Ahab, this is what's gonna happen. It's gonna rain, prepare for it. Then he goes up to the top of the mountain and he starts to pray diligently. He sends a servant out to have a look to see if there's rain. The servant comes back and says, there's no rain. Elijah doesn't give up, he keeps on praying. Then he sends the servant out again and he says, go and have another look. The, the uh, servant comes back again, no rain. So Elijah keeps on praying. See, he's not giving up, he's persisting. Sends the servant out again, still no rain. Sends him out again, still no rain. Sends him out again, still no rain. Sends him out again, still no rain. Getting the point? Still no rain, sends him out the seventh time. And the servant comes back and he says, you know what, there's just a tiny little cloud the size of a man's fist. And that's all Elijah needed. He thought, yoo I believe in God. The rain is on the way. Friends, there's even the mighty Elijah had to pray seven times for the answer to come. And even when the, the answer came, it was just in the form of something very tiny. But with Elijah's faith, he knew that God was gonna push through. Friends, we need to be like that. In fact, you know, the Bible says that although we see Elijah as being an amazing person, the Bible tells us he was very normal. He was just a man that put into practice biblical principles. We see this in James chapter 5, 17 to 18, where it's referring to this story. And it says this, Elijah was a man just like us. Now we see him as being a great prophet, but James says, you know, he was just ordinary. He was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it wouldn't rain and it didn't rain on the land for three and a half years. And then the story we've just heard, verse 18, again he prayed and the heavens gave rain and the earth produced its crops. You see, Elijah was really just an ordinary man, 
but he knew how to pray. He knew how to persist. He knew how to put his faith in God. And friends, that's what we need to learn to do when we pray. We need to pray and not give up. We need to pray with perseverance. We need to pray with faith and believe that God's gonna do something. Friends, don't you see that these trials are a test for us? When we're going through these difficult seasons where everything's frustrating, this is the test. This is where God is saying, I'm building your character. None of us like our character being built. We would much prefer that everything went well. We would love to just pray and all the answers just come easily, just like a slot machine. You put in your money and bang, out comes the Coke. But friends, prayer is not like that. God purposely delays so that we come close, so that we build faith, so that we build our character, so that we learn to come close to Him and trust in Him. And that's why Jesus said, when I come back on earth, will there still be people with faith? In other words, will they have pushed through all the frustration and still be faithful at the other end? Friends, this COVID-19 time is not a surprise to God. He knew this was gonna happen. And the wonderful thing is that we are safe, but God is teaching us things in the circumstances. Of course, things are gonna come right again. Of course, this is just a season. But friends, it's not a season to drift away from God. It's a season to come close and to grow spiritually stronger. You see, these trials are sort of like a spiritual gymnasium. All these things that we do, praying and trusting and persevering, they're making us stronger and developing our character. Last week, I ended the time with a verse from Galatians. We talked about planting seeds and waiting them for them to come up. And I talked about the time when I was a little boy where I was planting some corn, I planted the seeds, and every day I came out just to see what had come up, sort of expecting like Jack and the Beans thought that there would be sort of a a huge corn plant there the next day. But of course, that's not the way that it works. There's always time between when we sow and when we reap. And it's exactly the same with prayer. We put prayer into the ground and we have to wait. Occasionally, we get an instant answer. But most of the time, like a seed, we have to wait. And in the meantime, what do we do with that seed? Well, we tend it. You know, with a seed, we make sure that it's got sunlight. We make sure that it's got water. We make sure that it's got every provision that it needs to be able to grow. It may need protection. So we tend it. And so what we do with our prayers is we tend them by adding more prayers. We continue to pray. My wife Liz and I pray every day and we have a list of people we pray for. Very rarely do we see instant results. But over time, as we continue to persist in prayer, we see things happening. And that's exactly the way it is with the seed. When you tend it properly, when you pray into that situation, you see the harvest at the other end. The verse I ended on last week is the verse I end with this week. It talks about waiting for those seeds to grow. In Galatians 6 verse 9, it says, So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At the right time, we'll reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. And friends, that's my challenge to you today. Whatever you're struggling with, let this be an on-ramp to your faith, an opportunity to grow in Jesus, to grow in your prayer life, to grow in faith, an opportunity to learn how to pray. And a couple of tips on prayer. One of the things is if you have a journal, if you write down the things you're praying, that can make it easier. And often praying with others too, especially a spouse or a close friend, that can be a powerful way to learn to pray as well. But the most important thing is be persistent. And I wanna end with the words that Winston Churchill didn't actually say. He didn't say these words, but these are my words to you. Keep trusting in God and never give up, never give up, never, never, never give up. God bless you. And I hope that you have a wonderful week. You know, if you have not made a decision to follow Jesus, I'd love to give you that opportunity to do that today. If you're watching us online, there is a little button that you can push that 
Uh, if you push that button to say, I'm making a decision to follow Jesus, members of our team would love to talk to you and explain more to you about what this is about. And basically what it is, it's us developing a relationship with God. And how we do that is we come to believe that God, our Heavenly Father, loves us. He planned our lives and He sent Jesus to die on the cross for us. We come to know that God is out of relationship with us because of our sin. Everything we do wrong is like rebellion to God and we have to ask Him for His forgiveness. So what we do is we pray a simple prayer. We say, God, I thank You that You love me. Thank You that You want to be my friend. I ask You to forgive me for my sin. And I thank You that Jesus came and died on the cross for me and He paid the penalty for my sin. I ask You to forgive me and I pray that You'll come and live in my heart forever and I choose to follow You. And if you pray that prayer and mean it with all your heart, God will come and do something powerful within you. All you need to do is press that little button or if you're uh, watching on some other forum, uh, you can contact us at info at grace.org.nz and our team will get in touch with you and uh, they would love to pray for you. But let me pray as we close. And I'd love to pray for those who are frustrated in their faith at this time as well. Father, I thank You for those who are watching who have not made a commitment to know You yet, but may make that decision today. I pray, Lord, that they would come to realise that they are separated from You and pray that prayer asking for forgiveness and asking that You would come and fill their hearts with Your love. Lord, I also pray for people today who are frustrated in their faith, maybe drifting away or leaning away from You because of disappointment or from frustration of things that are going on. Lord, would You draw near to them, but would You help them to grow in persistence and perseverance May this time be a time of spiritual growth, not when we are spending all our spare time on the internet, Lord, but we're spending our time coming to know You. So as we come out the other end, we will be strong in character and our faith will be strong too. So I pray a blessing over all those who are watching today in Jesus' Name, Amen. It has been a real privilege being with you today. Uh, next weekend. We look forward to being with you again for Father's Day. And uh, if you want to see any of our other programs, especially some of our kids' programs, which I know you'll really enjoy, they're very funny, you can go to grace.org.nz and just go to our live stream part and you'll see plenty of other programs as well. It's been wonderful being with you today. Hope you have a good week. We will be praying for you. Matewa. i